it's uh, it is truly a joy to be back in Norway. And uh, before I get into God's word, I want to uh, sincerely recognize and appreciate Brother. Uh, for, you know, they typically would say that one servant of God will know the troubles of another servant of God because anything is very easy. You can become the CEO of an organization. You can become a film superstar. You can do anything. But to be a servant of God and to make changes or bring about changes in people's lives is very, very difficult. It needs a true calling and it needs true dedication, it needs true commitment. And uh, since I've been in the ministry not as long as brother was, but I truly know the difficulties a man of God goes through. And I want to thank God for his life and for using his talent. And uh, though I never understood a word of what you sang, but I knew that it was one of my favorite songs that you sang, it was sung by Dr. D.J.S. Dinagaran. Every time I hear this song, whichever condition I am, I always have tears in my eye. And here, since I was going to preach, my ego did not let me bring tears. So I just controlled my tears and I wanted to show that I'm a strong man. It is a very beautiful song, very heart-touching song. So thank you, brother. And for our meditation today, I'm sure you must have Somebody must have read it, but I want to read it to you again. For our meditation today, the Holy Spirit led me to go to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1 to 8. If you have your Bibles, please turn to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1 to 8. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him, saying, has not the Lord anointed you leader over inheritance? When you leave me today, you will meet two men near Rachel's tomb at Zelsa on the border of Benjamin. They will say to you, the donkeys you set out to look for have been found. And now your father has stopped thinking about them and is worried about you. He is asking, what shall I do about my son? Then you will go on from there until you reach the great tree of Tabor. Three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you there. One will be carrying three young goats, another three loaves of bread, and another a skin of wine. They will greet you and offer you two loaves of bread, which you will accept from them. After that, you will go to Gibeah of God, where there is a Philistine outpost. As you approach the town, you will meet a procession of prophets coming down from the high places with lyres, tambourines, flutes and harps being played before them. And they will be prophesying. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in, a, in power and you will prophesy with them and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hand finds to do, for God is with you. Go down ahead of me to Gilgal. I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, but you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are to do. Friends, I want to share a few points from this specific chapter and from these few verses. Many times we go through the Bible, we read the scripture like a story, but many of the people whom I know, they love to say that I've read the Bible 50 times, 100 times, 200 times, all that is very good. But when we read the Bible, every single verse has a revelation. There is a reason why each verse is mentioned in the Bible. And today I want to give you a very different perspective, not because I have thought about it, because I myself have gone through this chapter many times but different perspective the Holy Spirit gave me as I was waiting for this audience. As many of you are aware, I do not have the habit of repeating my sermons until and unless I am truly led by the Holy Spirit. And for this specific audience, I am sure that some of you will get your Rhema word today. And before I get into the details, I want to start with the word of prayer too. Lord our Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for this wonderful time. And Master, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to come into your presence. And most importantly, Lord, your people have come here with one expectation. 
that they must hear from the Most High God. Not from me, Master. I have nothing to share with them. I have nothing to say to them. Lord. But Lord, it is only through your Holy Spirit. It is only through your Holy Spirit that a man's heart can be shaken. It is only through the Holy Spirit that life can be pumped into dead cells. Lord, I invite the Holy Spirit. I invite the Holy Spirit, Master, to fill this room. And I invite the Holy Spirit to take control of our hearts, Lord. And let your people know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth lives even today. That Jesus Christ of Nazareth is looking into their lives very closely. And Lord, let your people know that you are not another God, but you are the only living God. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' matchless name I pray. Amen. Friends, when we go through these few verses, there are a few things that Samuel says to Saul. Saul has been chosen and Samuel tells Saul that you are going to be the king. But before you get into the palace, before you take over the throne, there are a few signs that will take place in your life. So what does that relate to common men like you and me? It means a lot, brother, sister. The first sign that Samuel tells Saul is that there will be somebody who comes and they will tell you that your father has stopped thinking about the donkeys and he started worrying about you. And what does that mean to us? Many times God will call people for ministry. Many times God will use ordinary people like you and me. And when we step into our ministry, there is a lot of question marks in our family. Oh, how will my parents react? What will my father and mother think? What will they do? Immediately parents, they have several question marks around them. It is very common that when you meet youngsters today, you ask them what you want to do. The common response that you will get, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, I want to be this, I want to be that. How many youngsters are at a young age, have you heard kids say, I want to serve the Lord? Very, very, very seldom will you hear this. Why? There is a reason to that. Because if you go into ministry, it is not very lucrative. You do not get a white collar job. You do not have a monthly paycheck till a certain period of time that God blesses you. Most of the times you have to walk in faith. Many times parents fail to drill this into their children because they are very scared. The society will ask hundred questions. What does their son do? My son is a full time minister. The next question is how much does he earn? So who will give their child for marriage? How will they run their family? Several question marks run. I am here to tell you one thing, brother, sister. Before God uses you, before God takes you, the first sign that he will give you, he will take care of your family needs. And that is why precisely Samuel tells Saul, your father will do this, but this is what is going to happen. He clearly says that God is watching your family, that God is watching over your father's needs, that God is watching everything around you in your family. We must understand that when you come for the Lord, God will definitely take care of your family. It is very miserable today that you have to find certain anointed men of God who can really bring deliverance. There are thousands and thousands of preachers, not only in America, but all around the world. But how many can truly bring God's word? How many can truly bring deliverance into people's lives? It's a big question mark. Why? Because you have to pay a very heavy price, brother, sister. It is not a joke to come and do ministry. It is absolutely a life of sacrifice. You must learn to pay a price. Today, many parents on one side, they pray, Oh Lord, please touch my child. Please use my son. Please do this. Please do that. When do they start praying? At the age of 40, 45, when everything is gone, the prime of their life is given for nonsense in this world. When the prime of their time is run behind the corporate world. When the prime of their life is running behind money. And after everything goes through, when they become drug addicts, when they get into bad habits, bad company, when the marriage is breaking or when the marriage is broken or several cracks come into the family, that is when we look up to God. That is when we really begin to wonder, Oh Lord, please touch my child. But at a young age, we are so careful in growing up our kids. Today, many parents who are seated here, how many of you here can boldly raise your hand and say, Yes, I drill this into my children. Yes, I know that this is what my child has to do. I still remember 
Every day when I, when I was growing up, my grandmother and my mother, there was only one thing they will tell me. You become a doctor, you become an engineer, you do anything you want. We don't care about it. But you must stand for the Lord. Come what may, whatever you do, you must stand as a living witness. Every day they will inject this. At that point of time, I really didn't know what they were saying. I never knew that one day this was going to come to pass. That is the power of parents' prayer. Even today, my mother fasts every day in a week that God should use me. That God should use me mightily. Now she knows that when you step out for ministry, that God will take care of all your family needs. You must always understand that if God calls you, He will definitely provide. There is no way that you will go on lack of something, brother, sister. It is a very, very wrong notion that people have today that if you come for ministry, you won't have even a pair of chapels to wear. Today, many people think you come for ministry, you won't have good clothes. Many people think you come for ministry, you will have to be like a beggar. Yes, God will take you through trials. God will take you through temptations, through difficult times. You have to pass through the valley of tears. You have to pass through the valley of suffering. But in all of this, when you stand firm, God will definitely take care of your needs. You must always remember that we have a God who knows much more than you and me. Today, many times, we are bound by our human intelligence, by human thoughts, by human experience, by our education, by our sophistication, by technology. Our dependence is completely on technology. Today, if one day there is no internet, all of us are doomed. Our hands, legs, everything looks like it's tied up. We cannot survive without, without internet. I must share this testimony to you. In the last three weeks, three weeks back, I had to move to Mexico for work reasons. So I no longer live in uh, Michigan and I'm living in Mexico and just for the ministry I come here for the first week. So when I went to Mexico, the first two weeks, completely I was cut off from the world. There was no internet, there was basic amenities were missing, several problems. So when I began to wonder what I'm going to do, because I was so addicted to the internet that even the Bible I was you know, very very uh, lazy to open everything on the phone on your iPad I was so addicted to the internet that I would start re reading the book it was everything was happening through the phone and through the iPad and this and everything but as I began to wonder what I will do there was nothing else I could do once I came back uh, from work there was nobody to talk to people could not reach me because People are very careful. As long as I was in the US, every day I would get calls for typically one hour, two hours, three hours for prayer. But after I moved to Mexico, people stopped calling me because it became ISD calls. So everything started reducing and I had so much time. And I didn't know what to do with this time. But as I began to look into the Bible, as I began to read again and again and again, that is when the Holy Spirit showed me several things that several times that I read I could not understand. I could not have a different uh, dimension of what the word had to offer, what are the different perspectives the Holy Spirit could go, give you. Many times in our life this is what happens. God will compel you, God will push you into a different zone, out of your comfort zone to teach you certain things. If I did not go to Mexico and if I did not spend hours meditating on the Bible, I would have missed out several things in my life. Today I know the value of reading through the Bible again and again and again because each time I read, the Holy Spirit gives different, different revelations for the same words. This would have never been possible if I was here because I had several things around me. As a servant of God, sometimes you will be lifted from your comfort zone. And you will be pushed into a zone where you will be compelled to walk with God. You will be compelled to look up to God. But you have a choice. The beauty about Jesus Christ is He will never ever enforce anything. He has given you and me the free will to choose what you want. Many times the outcome is not what we expect because we take decisions through our own intelligence, through our human rationalization. You must understand through human rationalization, you can never see certain things beyond your naked eyes. If you have to know what God has in store for you five years from now, ten years from now, why you are going through certain problems, 
What was the reason for you to have this split in your family? What was the reason your child's marriage broke? What was the reason that you had to go through this divorce? Several things only the Holy Spirit can give you the answer, brother, sister. And it is possible only when you walk with God. And Samuel very precisely tells all, before God uses you, God will take care of all these needs. He will ensure that your family needs will be met. So the first point that I want to lay before you is, as a family, it is not only for men of God, but for all those who trust on the Lord, for all those who look up to God, when God calls you, never be worried or never be scared of what is going to happen. If God has called you, He will definitely provide. Today, many people have given a very wrong notion about the ministry. If you come, you do this, you do that, several problems. Yes, it is there. But if God has called you, it is very, very important. If God has called you, let me re-emphasize. If God has called you, if God has called you for the ministry, He will definitely provide. But if you take certain decisions emotionally because of certain drama that took place in your world, many people are doing this mistake. For some time, God is using me, oh, I will come to full-time ministry. If some gifts God shows you initially, again, I will come for ministry. If God calls you, He will provide. But if you take certain decisions, you have to pay a price for it, brother, sister. So the first, prior, first point that I want to say is that from this specific chapter, if God calls you and if you stand uprightly, He will definitely take care of your family needs. The second point that I want to lay before you, Samuel says that the second sign that you will see is that you will see a group of people who will come down, they will be carrying bread and they will be carrying wine and they will give you two loaves of bread and you must accept it. So what does that mean to us? If God calls you and on your journey to your destiny, throughout the journey, God will take care of every single meal in your life, of every single meal of your family. And that is why Samuel says that this group of people will come and they will give you two loaves of bread and you will accept it. Today there are many question marks in our life. If I do this, what will happen? How will I pay my bills? How will I do this? What will happen to the meal? What will happen to my children's needs? How will I, what will I do for my next meal? There are several question marks. But here from the Bible, we see something very clearly, brother, sister. Samuel says that this sign also will take place. That God will take care of the bread and oil in your house. You must never forget this. When you walk with God, till the time God takes you into the palace, Till the time Saul went into the palace or became the king, there was a path that he had to go through. But throughout this path, God very clearly said, till you meet your destiny, till you come to the pinnacle point, I will take care of every single meal of yours. So there is no reason for us to be worried about what will happen tomorrow. Many times the trap that the enemy lays for you and me is fear. If you see most problems around our life, 90% of the problems will never happen. 90% of the times we are breaking our heads, we are worrying and worrying and worrying, oh what will happen? If this takes place, what will happen? Will my son pass? Will my son be healed? Will my daughter see a new life? Will my son get married? Will this happen? Will that happen? Questions after questions. This is a very, very easy trap that you and me fall for. It is not only you, but even men of God, we are always surrounded by several question marks. This common trap that the enemy lays before us is for us to move away from God. But I'm here to tell you that if you are called by God, again, if you are called by God for the ministry, if God calls you as a family to do something for him, never be worried about what will happen to you, brother. The enemy can say several things. He can bring several question marks before you. There could be fear gripped all over you. There could be question marks all around you. But I'm here to challenge you and tell you that if God calls you, He will provide. Till the time you meet your destiny. Till the time you come to a point where everything falls in place. Where God's plans begins to establish. Till that time, He will definitely take care of your needs. And I also want to prove it to you biblically through another character. If you look at Peter very closely, he looks at Christ walking on the sea. And he says, Lord, if it is you, let me also walk. Christ says, come on. 
he begins to walk till the time he saw Christ and his face he was walking on water but the moment he began to see the surrounding the moment he began to see the winds the moment he began to see the waves he began to drown this is a classic example for you and me as long as you see Jesus Christ the impossible will take place but the moment you start looking at the barriers around you at the problems around you the question marks around you definitely you and me will sing there is no extra leverage that a man of God gets brother sister it is the same treatment that you and me get as long as we look up to Christ Christ will take care of our needs as long as we keep worrying and worrying and worrying about our future you will only spoil your health and the most important thing you will spoil the peace in your heart and you must always remember if you want God's plans to be established in your life you must have the peace in you until and unless you have God's divine peace in you you can never see God's plans be fulfilled in your life it is very very important so this also you must remember that God will take care of every single meal in your life there will not be a single day where you will walk empty handed or with an empty stomach I have several several testimonies to share with you but I want to be very crisp and I do not want to take too much of time the next point or the third sign that Samuel tells Saul is that as you go from here you will see a company of prophets and as you go along with them the spirit of the Lord will come on you and then you will begin to prophesy and then whatever you do it will prosper it is very very interesting he does not say that after you gain wisdom after you read books after you do this after you practice the works of your hand will be blessed he gives one very very clear sign wait for the spirit of the Lord to come on you and then whatever you do will prosper many times you and me think if we work very hard if we study extraordinarily if we do supernatural have put supernatural efforts we will succeed in our life it is a very very common mistake that you and me do brother the Bible very clearly says when the Spirit of the Lord comes on you and then when you do certain things it will prosper today if you want your hands the work of your hands to be blessed you must know that you need the Holy Spirit today how many of you seated here can boldly raise your hand and tell me yes I have the Holy Spirit how many of us seated here can boldly raise our hands and say we have the Holy Spirit if you say you have the Holy Spirit you must have the gifts of the Holy Spirit brother sister you will only fool yourself if you say you have the Holy Spirit and you do not have the gifts of the Holy Spirit so how do I say this the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes he will never come empty-handed with him comes the gifts of the Holy Spirit so if you say that you have the Holy Spirit the gifts of the Holy Spirit must operate through you otherwise you will only fool yourself brother sister I'm very sorry I'm being blunt but this is the way it is the truth has to be shared the way it is if you are somebody who's looking for success in your life if you are somebody who's looking for success in your family for success in your ministry for success in your church in whatever you do you must very very clearly know that you need the Holy Spirit if you have the Holy Spirit very good if no please ask God please give me the Holy Spirit Lord. today the very word Holy Spirit has become a very yucky thing for people because they think we are crazy we are out of place this guy is mad he's talking in a different language several unwanted things are being spoken again the choice is up to you you have a choice to make if you want you get the Holy Spirit and with the Holy Spirit comes several advantages the next thing that I want to lay before you is very very interesting Samuel tells Saul once these three signs take place I will come down and you have to wait for seven days so why is that he says you are already prepared you have the ammunition for war you are all prepared but wait for seven days many times in our life God will ask us to wait he will tell us wait but we are very impatient as human beings the most common mistake that you and me do is take split decisions because we cannot wait God would have spoken very clearly and would have told you that yes I will give you a child 
Yes, I am going to give you a job. Yes, I am going to bless your family life. I am going to enlarge your ministry. I am going to use you mightily. But you have to wait. The problem that you and me, most of the times we have, we cannot wait. It is the same problem that Saul had. And this small mistake that he commits brings blunder into his life. One small mistake, he does not go and commit adultery. He does not go and commit murder. He does not do any major crime. One small disobedience. He did not wait for seven days. And this impatience takes away the kingdom from him. There are few reasons why Samuel asks Saul to wait. The most important reason is, once God gave Saul the Holy Spirit, and once God took care of all his needs, for seven days, he expected Saul to prepare himself, to sanctify himself. When we go for war and when we are about to enter into a big battle, you and me must be prepared to make these huge giants. Today, many people do not understand that there is a spiritual realm. There is a spiritual warfare around each and every one of us. You can look at the spiritual warfare not through your naked eyes. You can look at the spiritual warfare only through your spiritual eyes. Biggest mistake that you and me do, we think certain things we do in our ability and why isn't it happening? You must understand that until and unless God approves it in heaven, it will never be yours on earth. You must understand this brother sister. Many of us do not know that there is a spiritual realm. There is a spiritual warfare. And in that spiritual warfare, until and unless Christ gives us the victory, we can never go forward. And I will prove it to you biblically. If you go through the Bible and read about Moses, the Bible says that as Joshua and company went for war, Moses raised his hands and he was praying. As long as Moses raised his hands and he was praying, they began to see victory. But the moment Moses brought down his hands, they began to lose. So what does that mean to us? It is the same army, the same battle, but as long as Moses was praying, they were winning. But as long as he brought his hand down, they were losing. This is a clear sign for you and me that there is a spiritual world. There is a spiritual realm. And things that happen in the spiritual world will determine what will happen in the reality for us. So you must always understand, during this waiting period, there is something happening in the supernatural world. And when we wait, that is when God's plans will begin to establish. That is when you and me can look at several things around us. With ease it will flow in. But till that time, we must be patient. Saul commits a blunder because he could not wait. I am sure some of you seated here are waiting for certain breakthroughs. Are waiting for certain problems to be solved in your family life. But the message for you is wait for some time. Because once God binds it for you, it will surely be yours. And till that waiting period, you and me must prepare ourselves. So what do you mean by prepare ourselves? We must learn to sanctify ourselves. We must learn to look up to God. We must learn to hear His voice. We must learn to walk with Him day in and day out. It is very difficult, brother, sister. Many people think coming and preaching is very easy. It is absolutely not easy. Before each message I give, I have to fast and pray for minimum three to four days. Because I, if I come and blabber something here, you will walk out as ordinary human beings. But if there has to be, your, if your heart has to be stirred, and if the Holy Spirit has to minister to you bullseye for your problem, we have to pay a price. Every servant of God who has to bring impact in, on people's lives has to pay a price. We have to wait on the Lord. It is not just that, oh, I close my eyes and immediately I get the word. We have to wait. We have to wait on the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit will come. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because if it is not for the Holy Spirit, you and me would have been doomed several years back. It is only because of the Holy Spirit that you and me are not yet consumed by this wretched devil. So you and me should always know that we must be prepared. And God will put a waiting period. If you are able to wait, you will see great and mighty things in your life. So this is very briefly what the Holy Spirit put in my heart. And now I want to pray for you. 
and precisely what the Holy Spirit tells me, I will tell you. So I want you to prepare yourself and spend this time only between you and God. And let us look up to Jesus Christ. Because it is only you who know the depths of man's 